Hi, everybody. This is Mark Chafferdini with Go See Talk. I'm here with Emma Horvath to talk about what lies below from Vertical Entertainment and XYZ Films. How did you guys meet? I've been at the lake all year, studying a few species here. You're kind of a, a weird dude. I guess I am. But I mean, weird is cool, right? It's December 1st. How's, uh, how's your winter going? I'm great. I'm a little cold. Um, <laughs> it snowed for the first time where I am uh, yesterday. So very oh. excited. Very cold. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we are almost through with this year, but a good way to stay warm is uh, watching your newest thriller. Um, you've been in horror movies before. This is uh, kind of in the same vein. Um, what, was, what was exciting about this film and what made you want to get on board? Um, I think the, the character was what drew me to it first. I've, I've always had a soft spot for like socially stunted characters, slightly socially <laughs> inept people. Um, and the character has a bit of a, a bit of a Peter Pan complex at the start and then is forced to grow up pretty fast. Um, so yeah, I, I, I liked her very much. Is this a true story? <laughs> Sorry, yes. terrible jokes, <laughs> terrible jokes. Um, so you play the daughter uh, to Mina Suvari's character. Um, mm -hmm. What was that dynamic like? There was some very interesting plot developments where there was, you know, um, you know, she was your mother, but then there was some jealousy and things like that. Like what, what kind of character bios well, were given to you and what, what was that all about? Um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting because in the, in the movie, uh, versus real life, I think me and I are kind of flipped. <laughs> like in the in the movie, um, it's a bit of like the child is the adult and the adult is a bit of a child situation. And um, and then in real life, like Mina has been doing this for so long. She's such a pro, um, and I'm relatively new um, to, to film and TV. And um, I was just learning from her every every day. Um, yeah. So this is Braden, uh, they call him Brad, uh, his, it's his first directorial feature. Um, what, what kind of latitude did he give you? What kind of notes did he give you about your character? And I guess what, uh, what did he let you explore for your own? Uh, we all got like, like pretty detailed bios where like, it was like, uh, here's all the stuff that's not in the script that, that happened to this character uh, prior to this. Um, and then the relationships they've had um, in the past. Um, and that was pretty much it, you know, like here, here's a bio and then see you on set kind of, <laughs> um, and then we had a table read and uh, there was a bit of a discussion about, um, the level of social awkwardness of the, of the character. I think when I, when I read it, um, there were so many references to, to her sort of ineptitude that I think I went a little too far with it at the beginning. Um, so we had discussions about pulling it back and like when, when to dial it up and when to tone it down a little bit. Um, and then Brad is a pretty, I think, hands-off director for the most part once like you're in production. Um, they like ask for, for several takes, um, but there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of like, you know, halting and like trying to figure it too much out, you know, when we're, when we're shooting. And it was a tight, tight schedule too, so not a ton of time for that. Okay. Uh, you know, one of the things that was exciting to me about the movie is that I had so many questions when it was so when this was over. And I don't want to get into spoiler territory, but there's things yeah. like, you know, you've got a little bit of red in your hair, and then there's that that last image of the movie is just so impacting. I mean, was there something that you? I mean, do you have any questions? Were you told the whole story? Well, what were your questions specifically? Like, um, um, maybe I can answer. More about the alien's planet. What was his <laughs> overall goal? How many there were? I mean, I just, it was a myriad <laughs> of questions. And um, what was red hair? Yeah, no, I, I definitely had questions, but I, in the production of it, I sort of, I, the character wouldn't know all those details anyways. Um, so for me, I, I didn't know. Trey, Trey might have known all those little details, but I, I didn't ask because I didn't think it was was uh, helpful, you know, gotcha. uh, from my perspective, yeah. 
Okay. So um, when you said that the roles between you and Mina were flipped, um, did she, well, you know, like you said, she's a pro. What kind of pointers did you guys, uh, you know, did she share with you? Um, I think main safety was a big thing. I think Mina's, Mina's really good at, at asking questions and making sure everything is like, you know, safe whenever we're doing something slightly dangerous. Um, and I think, you know, I come from the world of shoestring, low budget genre movies and, and I'm sort of used to like, okay, like what, you know, let's do it. And, <laughs> um, I wasn't used to asking questions. So she, she was really helpful in, in that sense, a bit of a mom in that way. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. I always kind of geek out about uh, parts and, you know, things in movies where the logistics are just, I wonder how they do that. So there was a scene, not sexy scene, but it's a shower scene where Trey is kind of, uh, he's predatorizing on you. He's, he's right. There. So how did that work? How did you know when he was looking at the, at the, the shower curtain? How did you know when to do your line? How does that, is there a mirror or what, how does it work? That was really like kind of like a lucky scene. I remember that day we were like, oh my gosh, there's so many elements that have to, we have to get right. And there was a lot of like, okay, the camera is this far, we're showing this much, you know, the steam can't get on the lens. You know, there, there were a lot of like those kinds of conversations. And then oddly, like we, we did it like twice or three times and it was, the timing ended up working out. Like I had no idea what he was doing when I was in the shower, but you know, whatever. Yeah, it was one of those freak things where I was like, oh, we're going to be doing this 20 times. <laughs> but we ended, <laughs> we ended up not. Um, yeah, it was one of those magical moments, I guess. I think people are going to be impressed when they see it. Um, you know, the, the whole movie was creepy. I really couldn't tell what was happening. And the ending just kind of, like I said, left me with so many questions. What, what was your biggest takeaway? What, would you, what were you the most proud of uh, in the film or most impressed by? Proud of, I think the um, the first half of the movie when it's still sort of like a grounded family drama. Um, I personally had never done much of that. You know, I'd done more like genre movies um, that were like either more stylized or or that like groundedness wasn't um, that family drama aspect I hadn't done yet. So so that aspect of it, I I think it was a, my first time doing that and. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it's funny. That's what Trey, kind of Trey's takeaway from it was, um, you know, if someone's dating something, somebody and they're kind of telling their family members that something's wrong, you should listen to them because... Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> also careful who you fall in love with. <laughs> very good point. Very good point. Um, well, if we could just sidebar really quickly, heard you have a, a very big um, project you're working on going to maybe Middle Earth. Can you delve into any of that? Yeah, I, I mean, all I can really say is that I'm I'm very excited and um, looking forward to to everyone else being able to see it. You know. So can you? Are you going to be an orc? You're going to be an elf? You're going to be a hobbit? What's what do they have you pegged? For? <laughs> um, I can't I can't say. I wish I could. Uh, but yeah, just uh, let your imagination run wild. People have been guessing all sorts of things. I'm I'm going to go with elf, but maybe. Okay. That's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your, your smile betrays you. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Emma, um, let's just run down really quickly. Do you have uh, three or five um, sci-fi or uh, horror movies that are uh, your go-to? I know it's not Halloween's over, but what kind of movies do you like to watch when you're in a scary mood? I really, I really like the slower burn ones. Um, I really love Cronenberg's Dead Ringers. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more of a there's no jump scares in that. It's more just like creepy, gross, medical horror. Um, yeah, I'm a big Cronenberg fan. All three might be Cronenbergs, <laughs> if that's all right. I love The Fly. Um, and then Scanners, which is one of his earlier films I, I really, really love. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Have you, have you gotten into any of his son, Brandon's works? No, I didn't know that, that he was working. Yeah, uh, Brandon Cronenberg, his first movie was uh, antiviral, which kind of plays on the whole society's love of um, celebrities and how far they could take it. And uh, I got to speak to him a number of years ago at Fantastic Fest. And uh, now he just came up with a new one called Possessor, which is another very heady sci-fi. So he's, uh, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So you might want to check out his work. 
Yeah, there's definitely like a technology technology meets horror meets uh, social commentary bent to all of that. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'll have to look it up. After this. Yeah. Well, until that time, everyone check out What Lies Below coming out on December 4th. Um, Emma, it's been a pleasure talking with you and uh, good luck fighting orcs, I guess. <laughs> Thank you.